All right, Electrode, you self-destruct, Electrode. Wait a minute. What does that mean? I would die too? I, I don't think I want to do this. Ah. Great. Oh my god, Derek, is that you? Self-destruct? Yeah. Ha, no way. Memento. What is going on guys? This is Dobbs here bringing you another Pokemon video. And in this video, I'm going to go over every death oh. that I can find in Pokemon. But before we start, this video is sponsored by Factor 75. Hey guys, Mini Dobbs here. Um, what is that? Some kind of math course? No, Mini Dobbs, it's a food delivery service. The 75 in Factor represents that 75% of your fitness results are derived from your diet. And that's where this meal plan comes into play. Okay, that makes sense, but I see you cooking hell fresh all the time, and all that prep time you do just is too long for me. I'm trying to get my food fast over here. Well, Mini Dobbs, that's the best part about Factor 75. All meals require no prep, and all you gotta do is pop in the microwave for a few minutes or cook it on the stove, and boom! You have a quick and healthy meal at your disposal. So you're saying that I can literally get a nutritious meal in two minutes? Yeah, exactly! Oh my god! I know, right? I'm totally not talking to myself right now in hyperbole. Yeah, totally. And, you know, as a gamer, this is perfect for me. I can quickly get a nutritious meal with no hassle at all and get back to gaming. They even have smoothies and keto shakes as a quick snack, so that could work too. Yeah, Factor really eliminates the thought process of what to eat, which makes hitting your fitness goals 100% easier. And personally, I'm going to give it a shot because I've lost 20 pounds doing CrossFit this year, and I think Factor will help out with my diet even more. So if you want to join me, use my link down below or go to go.factor75.com and use my code for 50% off your first box. And yeah, let me know your gains down below. And with that, let's get into the video. All right, starting with all the Pokemon that have died in the Pokemon world, let's start with Charmander. Charmander will die if the flame on its tail runs out, since it represents its life force. Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff will never pause to breathe when it sings, and could potentially die if it's facing an opponent that doesn't fall asleep easily. So basically, if Jigglypuff faces a Pokemon with Vital Spirit or Insomnia, it dies. Paris. Paris dies when it evolves into Parasect, since the mushroom on his back takes over the host's body. Meowth. Meowth from Team Rocket temporarily died from Mimikyu literally scaring him to death. Just look at him. Primeape. Primeape will die if he gets too angry. So basically, every Annihilate that exists out there is a the result of a Primeape raging to death, which would look kind of like this. Farfetch'd. Farfetch'd are known to be a delicious meal, especially when cooked with a sleek. So obviously, tons of Farfetch'd are on lights for food. Muck. Muck are going extinct due to environmental improvements, even to the point where humans are making sludge ponds specifically for these Pokemon to feed on. Ghastly. Ghastly are said to be 95% gas and 5% souls of people who died from this gas. It must be smelly. Gengar. Gengar are known to steal lives of those who are lost in the mountains, and when it mega evolves, it's known to take lives of anyone and everyone, including its trainer. Onyx. An Onyx named Tectonix passed away and was buried on the Sevi Islands, and his memorial pillar kind of looks like he was halfway buried, which is pretty funny. Cubone. Cubone wears the skull of his dead mother. Marowak. Team Rocket on life to Marowak while they are poaching Marowak's skulls. Magmar. In the manga, Giovanni froze two Magmar to death while splitting them in half. So yeah, they're dead. Magikarp. Magikarp are eaten by Pidgeotto when they splash for no apparent reason. Lapras. In the manga, two Lapras fell to their death in an avalanche, but were later saved by a prize when he traveled back in time with a Celebi. So did they die? I don't know. Omastar. The Omastar lion went extinct because of their heavy shell, making them too slow to catch prey. Kabuto. Kabuto went extinct because it wasn't able to flip itself back over when stuck on his back, which is pretty funny and sad. Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl and probably thousands of other Pokemon went extinct due to a large meteor impact. Jumpluff. Jumpluff travel using seasonal winds, but once their cotton spores run out, their life ends as well, since they cannot move anymore. Wobbuffet. Wobbuffet have a habit of trying to outdo other Wobbuffet, even to the extent of seeing who can go the longest without food. And if there are no trainers around supervising them, one of them will inevitably die. Snubble. Harry and Snubble passed away in a fire while trying to receive a key to their power plant. Mega Scizor. Mega Scizor's body literally melts from the excess energy it stores with Mega Evolving. So if it stays in the state for too long, it will probably become a pile of goo. Slugma. If Slugma stops moving, it's Magul Cool and Harden, which I'm going to assume unlikes it. But then what happens when it uses the move Harden? I don't know. Corsola. Corsola used to live in the surrounding oceans all around Galar, but since they cannot survive in polluted water, they all turned into Galarian Corsola, which basically means they all died and became walking corpses. The Legendary Beasts. All three of the Legendary Beasts perished in the Brass Tower fire, but were later revived by Ho-Oh and probably were granted legendary powers. Celebi. Celebi died after being freed from the Iron Mask Marauder's control, but was later revived by, well, itself from the past and future, which is kind of insane when you think about it. It basically confirms that Celebi is immortal. Spoink. Spoink will die if it stops bouncing, since the shock of his bounce pumps his heart, which must be a pretty terrifying reality. 
Clay doll. Clay doll's body will literally melt if it gets wet, because I guess his body is made out of clay. So if it gets caught by surprise and it's used a psychic power to protect itself, it's a GG. Hoenn fossil Pokemon. According to Professor Proctor, both the Cradilly and Amaro lines went extinct due to geographic isolation, since the connected mainland with all the food was cut off by rising water. Latios. Latios dies at the end of the fifth Pokemon movie, after he sacrifices himself to save Altai Mare, and turning into the new Soul Dew, just like his father did years prior. Luxray. Sorrel's Luxray froze to death in a blizzard while sacrificing himself to keep Sorrel warm, which is very honorable. Rampardos. The Rampardos line probably wouldn't see it because they aren't very smart. They're probably as smart as Patrick Starr from Spongebob. Shield on. The Shield on line went extinct probably because they are vulnerable from the behind, so other Pokemon most likely took advantage of that. Driftloon. Driftloon are said to be made up of wandering souls, and it wouldn't surprise me if these souls are the children who drifted away thinking Driftloon was a balloon. Lucario. Lucario sacrificed itself in the 8th Pokemon movie to save Ash in the Tree of Beginning, so it could protect the balance between Pokemon and nature. Krogunk. Looker had a Pokemon that passed away during an investigation, and it is thought to be a Krogunk since in the previous games Looker owned one. Frostlass. Frostlass is the embodiment of women who get lost on icy mountains and pass away. Darkrai. Darkrai dies when trying to stop Dialga and Polkia from battling each other, taking a spatial ruin and a roar of time to the face. But later in the movie, he was revived, so all that pain for nothing. Stalin. There's a Stalin who died from old age, and was the first Pokemon to actually die in the anime and not be revived, which is pretty unlucky. Yamask. Yamask is a Pokemon who holds the face of their former self when they were human, so with every Yamask is the death of a person, which is pretty messed up, especially since they remember all their human memories. Zoroark. Zoroark got bodied by the main villain of the 13th Pokemon movie named Kodai, but was later revived by Celebi, so all that bodying for nothing. Frillish. Legend has it that residents who perish in a sucker ancient city turn into Frillish. So basically these fish are ghost people. Clink. Clink's interlocking two bodies spinning around to generate the energy they need to live. So if they stop spinning, it's a rip. Clang. Clang will die if his mini gear does not return after launching it at a foe, since it and his main gear form its body. Cryogonal. It is said that people in Pokemon who die at Snowy Mountains are reborn as Cryogonal, which is kind of random, but okay. Volcarona. Alder's Volcarona passed away due to an illness, but it's unknown to what illness it was. My guess is it got poisoned and Alder couldn't make it to a Pokemon Center in time, since he is a wonder. Talonflame. Talonflame and this girl named Ayla, along with most of the civilians from their city, died from turning to stone when he Voltal drained all their life force when using Oblivion Wing. Makes you wonder about all the Rhydon statues in the Kanto region. Did he Voltal unlife them too? Floet. AZ's Floet died in the Chaos War that took place 3,000 years prior, but was later revived by AZ himself using the ultimate weapon to bring the war to an end, which probably resulted in thousands of deaths of Pokemon and people on both sides. Honage. Honage is a manifestation of a person's soul who was alive by the very sword that makes up Honage's body, making it yet another Pokemon that was once a human. Kalos Fossils. The Aurora slime went safe for being frozen in ice, which doesn't make that much sense because the Pokemon are literally ice types. And as for the Tyantrum line, I'm going to assume the same thing happened to them as well, even though they were considered unstoppable during ancient times. Phantom. Phantom are the incarnation of children who got lost in a forest and sat on a stump, and once they passed away, their soul merged into the wood. Trevenant. A totem Trevenant from the anime passed away from an unknown reason, and has since decayed into a regular tree. Evoltal. Anyone who's around Evoltal will die when its life comes to an end, since it absorbs the life energy of every living thing around it to turn into a cocoon once more. And no, no Celebi shenanigans to revive the people here. Sandy Gas. Sandy Gas is the embodiment of grudges from the dead that possess a mound of sand, which is pretty spooky. Minier. If Minier's core is exposed for a long enough time, it will die. That or Frequenza finds them and eats them, which literally happened in the anime. Just look. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that Ash and his gang are not freaking out that many are literally getting eaten alive right now. Mimikyu. Anyone who sees Mimikyu's true identity will die. Also, Ace Roll has a shiny Mimikyu named Mimikins who passed away, but still hangs around as a ghost, which confirms that even ghost Pokemon can die. Melmetal. Melmetal passes away when his body rusts and falls apart, and cool enough the small stars that are left behind are eventually reborn as Melton. Hisuian Zora. Hisuian Zora is a Zora who passed away and came back to life, powered solely by resentment. Sinistee. Sinistee is the reincarnation of someone who passed away that possessed some nearby tea, which leads me to his evolution, Poltegeist. Poltegeist's tea has a distinct and enjoyable flavor, although drinking too much of it becomes fatal. So I'm going to assume that those who became a Sinistee were drinking Poltegeist's tea. Galar Fossils. I have no idea how the Galar Fossil Pokemon went extinct because clearly all their Pokedex entries are not accurate, but they all died in their native form somehow. Dreepy. Dreepy is actually the ghost of a Pokemon that existed during prehistoric times, so whatever Pokemon that was went extinct somehow too. Basculegion. Basculegion is covered in souls of trainers who passed away before finishing their journey, so all those little clouds you see that are hanging onto Basculegion's body are souls. 
Sarulej. Sarulej might be the reincarnation of a swordsman who passed away before accomplishing their goals, which might explain why they look so human. Bramblin. Bramblin is the embodiment of a soul unable to move on to the afterlife and was blown away by wind until it got tangled up in dry grass. So those little eyes you see are literally souls. Grievarn. Grievarn are wild dogs who perished without ever coming into contact with humans. Houndstone. Houndstone are dogs who were lovely mourned before they passed away. So kind of the opposite of Grievarn. Wochian. Wochian is the embodiment of a person's grudge who is punished for writing the king's evil deeds on wooden tablets, cladding itself to dead leaves. Chienpao. Chienpao is the embodiment of hatred of those who perish by the swords that hang from his mouth, which I'm going to assume was done by this mysterious king or their king's guard. And all of the Pokemon who are eaten by other Pokemon in the Pokemon world, as you can see in this very long picture that's still scrolling, which is why I didn't cover them all individually. Oh, there's Rayquaza eating Minyar, I told you guys. Ash and his friends are literally psychopaths. Wait, did I just see Behem eating Dubwool? I guess they are aliens, so they abduct stuff. Alright, enough of that. Moving on to the human deaths in Pokemon, let's start with Ash Ketchum, who has literally died six times. The first time was in the episode The Tower of Terror when a chandelier fell on top of him and Pikachu. The second time was in the first Pokemon movie, when Ash got turned into stone by Mew and Mewtwo's attacks. And yes, this is a confirmed death because supposedly the tears of Pokemon can bring someone back to life, stated by this random person. The third time, Ash and basically everyone around him were unlifed by human-eating blobs that guard the Tree of Beginning. The fourth time, Ash drowned when trying to restore the Seed Crown in the Manaphy movie. The the fifth time, Ash froze to death in outer space, don't ask me how he got there, and the sixth time in the I Choose You movie when Ash got bodied by the Pokemon under Marsh Shadow's control. Team Rocket Jesse, James, and Meowth were all in life by Evolta's Oblivion Wing, but were later revived by Xerneas, the Maiden and her lover. 2,000 years before the Ghost of Maiden's Peak episode, the Maiden's lover passed away in a war, and then the Maiden herself passed away on a hilltop waiting for him to return, which is pretty sad. Old Age Matteo, Alex, Hinny, and Kawhi's grandfathers and son's great-grandfather all passed away from presumably old age, and an elderly woman and man named Lacey and Lon passed away from old age as well. Captain The first Orange League champion, Captain, and his Pokemon died in a shipwreck, which happened 300 years prior of the anime. Amber Dr. Fuji's daughter Amber died at a very young age, and then a clone of her and the kids of starter Pokemon died inside their test tubes, but this was only shown in the Japanese version of the first Pokemon movie. Scientists. The scientists who created Mewtwo undoubtedly died when Mewtwo blew them up. And then their bones and body parts were used for creating Mewtwo's machines and his Pokeballs. So yeah, there's some nightmare fuel for ya. Vermilion City civilians. Most likely half of the civilians of Vermilion City died when Lance randomly fired a hyper beam at them. In the manga. Blackthorn Gym Leader. The original Blackthorn City Gym Leader passed away probably due to old age as well. And fun fact, his Dragonite became the new Gym Leader for a brief time until Claire caught him. Sir Aaron. Lucari's original owner, Sir Aaron, passed away in an unknown war. Courtney. Courtney was crushed by giant boulders after being dragged under the cave of origin by Archie's tentacle, but was later revived by Ruby Selby. Steven. Steven died from the strain of controlling the legendary Titans, but was also later revived by Ruby Selby. Norman. Norman died from a heart attack due to the sheer power that was required to control Rayquaza. But guess what? He was also revived by Ruby Selby, the most broken Pokemon ever. Like Selby has brought back two Laprases, itself, Zoroark, Courtney, Steven, and Norman. I should own a Selby. Dr. Young. At the end of the Mirage Pokemon special episode, Dr. Young walks back into his collapsing building that's on fire. So yeah, no way he survived that. Cyrus. It is thought that Cyrus died when he walked into the distortion world. Because, you know, it is outer space in a distorted world, so I, I don't know. Route 17 Woman. On Route 17 in the center region, it is thought that a woman died and haunted a house. And she haunts the house until the player picks up a spell tag, because after that she'll disappear. Hunter J. Hunter J and her crew definitely died when the ship was destroyed by the Lake Guardians. Like, just look, there's, there's no way they survived that. Young Girl In black and white, a spirit of a young girl who passed away can be seen on the Marvelous Bridge and again the Strange House. King of the People of the Vale The King of the People of the Vale, long name I know, died after borrowing the power of his Victini to move his castle and the people of the Earth to a safer location. The King Another random king perished after his Aegislash drained all of his life force when using it for battle. Old Couple An old man in Anastar City expresses grief over the death of his late wife, and after the player enters the Hall of Fame and returns to his house, the old man will no longer be there, implying that he too has passed away. Lysander Lysander and part of Team Flare died after he fires the ultimate weapon, destroying their headquarters, but I like to think that he gained immortality from the blast and is still alive under all of the rubble. Viafum Viafum and his kingdom were on life by Zygarde after he set Xerneas on fire while it was in tree form. Aster. Zinni's friend Aster was alive, presumably by the Devon Corporation, when they infiltrated the embedded tower to capture Rayquaza, although in the games her death is never explicitly explained. Pony Island Kahuna. Prior to the games, the Kahuna of Pony Island passed away, leaving the island with no Kahuna for several years, and in the anime, Hoppy's grandfather is said to be this Kahuna. 
Malo's mother. Prior to the anime, Malo's mother passed away due to an unspecified illness. Paula. There's a girl in Hammerlock who asks the player to deliver a letter to a boy named Frank in Bologna. And after the player delivers the letter to the boy, who's actually an old man, the girl is replaced by a reaper cloth, implying that she was a ghost girl who died long ago. Haruto. In the Journey's anime, Ash met the ghost of a boy named Haruto, who had died of an illness before starting his Pokemon journey. Krom and Fosa. Prior to the 23rd Pokemon movie, a couple named Krom and Fosa died in a car explosion, which was caused by Dr. Zed, which actually might be the first time we see a human unlifing another human in Pokemon. Rhyme's Puppy Pokemon. According to a magazine in Scarlet and Violet, Rhyme lost her dear puppy Pokemon when she was in her teens. And lastly, for all the humans that I could find, we have Professor Sada and Turo. Prior to the events in Scarlet and Violet, both Professor Sada and Turo died from an incident that destroyed the research station number 4 in Area 0. And finally, for all the deaths in Pokemon, we have all the grave sites, which are the Pokemon Tower in House of Memories in Kanto, Mount Pyre in Hoenn, Lost Tower in Sinnoh, Celestial Tower in Unova, Route 10 in Kalos, Haoli Cemetery in Memorial Hill in Alola, the Old Cemetery in Galar, and probably Area Zero in Paldea. And with that, that is every death that I could possibly find in Pokemon. Although, I'm sure there are a couple obscure ones that I missed, so if I did, let us know in the comments down below. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, you should check out my every Pokemon reveal before their generation video. And yes, there are a lot of Pokemon that were revealed before their own generation, so check it out. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.